Let us now talk about splitting fields. So say you're given a polynomial here and we say this polynomial F splits in an extension field E over this field F if it factors as a product of linear terms. So you only have linear terms. So E is called a splitting field if F splits over E but not in any smaller field. So this E is the most economical field. So let us see an example, say x square minus 2 over rationals. So this splits over real numbers as x minus root 2 times x plus root 2. But these real numbers are not economical. This is not a splitting field. You actually have a smaller field. This is root 2 adjoined with rationals, which is the splitting field for x square minus 2. Consider another polynomial x cube minus 2. So say this is also over rationals. And this splits like this, where omega is the cube root of unity, so 2 pi i by 3. So you can see x cube minus 2 splits over this q2 1 third omega. So notice that it also splits over complex numbers, but this is too big. We want something smaller. So it splits over this, but it does not split over this smaller field q2 1 third, because this field does not contain this complex number omega, the cube root of unity. So notice that by uniqueness of uh, simple algebraic extensions, this is iso 2 q 2 1 third because this is the root of x cube minus 2. And this is also iso 2 omega 2 1 third because omega 2 1 third is also the root of x cube minus 2. So these two fields therefore are isomorphic to each other. So you can construct an isomorphism between these two fields. Notice that although you can construct an isomorphism, these two fields are distinct. See, this lies in real numbers, whereas this does not lie in real numbers because it has this omega, which is cube root of unity, and you can see it's a complex number. You have i right here. So we already know that any polynomial will split over complex numbers. So this is already known to us from analysis. So thus for any irreducible polynomial over a field F, to get a splitting field, you just know what the roots of the polynomial are and you attach those roots to the field. So if the roots of the polynomial are R1, R2 all the way to Rn, then you attach them to your field and this will give you the splitting field. So our first result is which we want to prove is that splitting fields exist. Uh, just looking at here, you can say the splitting fields exist, but we want to prove this. So what it says is, so say you have a non-constant polynomial f of x which lies in this f of x. This f is a field right here. Then there is a splitting field for this polynomial f of x, e. So e obviously lies over f. So if degree of f of x is 1, then we are already done. There is nothing to prove. This is already linear. To go further, we use induction. Case n equals to 1 is done. Now you have the induction statement. Statement is true for all polynomials for degree less than f. So we already know that the irreducible factor of f will split in some extension field. In fact, this is the procedure for constructing extension fields. You take the field and modulo out by your irreducible polynomial. It will always give you an extension field which will contain the root of the polynomial, just like here. You modulo this out, you can get this or this. So you will always get an extension field where this splits. But say you have 2 1 third you will only have the first factor the second would be still irreducible in this field so f will split in some extension field so you will get some linear factor at least so f of x is x minus r1 times g of x now you use the induction step now since degree of g is less than degree of f so we have already said that the statement is true for all polynomials for degree less than f so by induction g would split now and say the roots of g are r2, r3, all the way to rn. You have r1 here. So you just get a splitting field now. You adjoin this r1, and then you adjoin all these roots. So you get a splitting field like this. Now, an important statement here is that uh, splitting fields are, in a sense, unique. So to see this, notice this diagram here. So say this is an ISO. So if this is an ISO, say the element here in field F1 
gets mapped to element here beta in field f2 so alpha is getting mapped to beta so now this f1 automatically injects into f1x and f2 injects into f2x so here say you have a polynomial which is say alpha 1x plus alpha 2x square so say this map is var phi you apply again the same map var phi to it so x would remain as such and these alphas will become beta so beta 1x plus beta 2x square so these beta 1 and beta 2 come from alpha 1 and alpha 2 is precisely what this isomorphism would map alpha 1 alpha 2 to so here alpha 1 alpha 2 will get mapped to say beta 1 beta 2 so say you have a polynomial here p of x so this polynomial will get mapped to phi p of x where x remains as such and this phi just changes the coefficients just like the coefficients have been changed here so the polynomial changes just like this polynomial becomes this so this phi essentially acting on here now you take the surjection map so f1x over a reducible polynomial here f2x over this phi p of x so this will be also reducible here because it is a reducible here so and this is an iso because this iso is doing nothing it's just carrying everything here and doing absolutely nothing on x so this iso will now become an isomorphism here so say a is a root of p of x then from your algebraic extensions we know that f1x over this p of x will give you f1 of a just like here and this b is a root of phi p of x so b is a root of phi p of x polynomial here so f2 over phi p of x will be f2 of p so this a is sent to this p via this isomorphism so to prove this is an isomorphism we have to do some more work you first have to construct this brown map which is composition of this map and say this projection map say pi 1 so first apply var phi and then apply, apply pi 1 this is this map and this is the map which will descend here so you will get an isomorphism so important remark here is before we end the lecture is that the splitting field is unique up to isomorphism so say you're given a monomorphism or an injective map f1 to f2 so for us we will consider this as an isomorphic map so if f of x lies in the first f1x so say f of x lies right here and phi f of x lies in f2 of x so you have correspondingly phi f of x right here so this gets mapped right here and say this f this splits in e1 and phi f of x this splits in e2 so then this phi this sends roots of f of x to roots of phi f of x so you have f of x right here and you have phi f of x right here so this will split in some field e1 this will split in some field e2 so the roots here are say r1 r2 all the way to say rn the roots here are rho1 rho2 all the way to say rho n so this phi will send these roots to these roots right here so in some sense splitting field is unique up to isomorphism notice that we are not saying which root will get mapped to which root we are just saying these roots are getting mapped to these roots now in general this can be extended to a monomorphism rather than just an isomorphism and this is easy to see so say you have this map f1 this injects into some map l so this is a monomorphism so we rewrite this so you rewrite it this as f1 to f2 which is a subset of this field l and you have an isomorphism right here so this becomes this case and then you just have uh, inclusion maps here l and this will go to l of x and then 
uh, you also modulo out again with phi p of x so this will get included into l of x modulo out phi p of x so everything will get transferred to a monomorphism 